I'm Christian Chiller. Welcome to my podcast, an enthusiastic ramble through whatever has taken my interest the past week or so. Expect technology, games, history, travel, geekery, and as always, much, much more. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Chinchilla Squeaks with me, Christian Chiller. Still on the road on the final stretch. Now, I will definitely have a lot to catch up with when I get back to solid ground, as it were. But right now, I am still on my travel microphone in a hotel room. Uh, so there we go. I don't have too much to update you on because I've actually, the since the last episode, I took some holiday. That was <laughs> I decided to go and do a whiskey tour with some friends in the Scottish Highlands. So I haven't really been doing very much, which was kind of the point. Um, I can't even remember if I told you very much about Open Source Summit in Bilbao on the last episode, but it was very good. And I have lots and lots and lots of interviews to bring out to you from that, which is why I'm coming to you quite regularly and clearing out the backlog. And in this episode, I have an interview with Dragos of the Senior Dev Quite a, a nice interview for any of you looking to improve your career, up your career, um, I guess learn how to learn, learn how to improve your skills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is still interviews from We Are Developers. I think I still have one left actually as well. And um, it, was a, it was a good chat actually. I wasn't really sure where it would go, but it's a very good chat. He's a very calm, balanced uh incisive kind of kind of voice so i really enjoyed that interview and um i think we'll, we'll just we'll just cut straight to it and then i'll catch up with you after the interview enjoy today i am joined by dragos one of the founders of the senior dev we missed each other at we are developers through various complications but we're here now um tell us a little bit about what the senior dev is um, hi, Chris. So, yeah, we missed each other, but uh, thankfully we got a chance to catch up again. Um, and yes, I'm going to direct in uh, the senior dev. What is the senior dev? Um, we are a yeah, relatively, relatively young company, I would say, mm -hmm. that's focused on providing um, let's training, upskilling, and mentoring for JavaScript developers that are looking to fast track their careers to the senior level and beyond. Okay. Is this something people are looking to do in a, a career break or um, whilst they're working? You know, is it part-time, full-time, self, self-guided? What's the structure? Mm, most of the developers we work with, and that means 99% are, are employed full-time. Okay. So this is something that's designed um, to do while you're employed. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, while because we, we believe that something like a career break would kind of damage your financial position. Um, take, taking a break to upskill yourself is not a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to combine whatever you're doing with your with your personal life and your and your job, right? Okay. Um, um, the, you know, how the program works, it's usually six to eight weeks okay. of focus training. And usually a one-year-long uh, mentorship okay. where you have access to the senior dev community. Um, you have calls with us every week. And again, the focus is um, mostly to close the technical gap. Mm -hmm. right? This is what we focus on the most. 80% uh, of the program, it's technical skills. 20% is, of course, um, how to sell yourself, mm -hmm. soft skills. Of course, the reality of uh, being a developer involves not only technical skills, and we want to fix that too. Okay. How did you end up here? What what made you decide to create this in the first place, and what what was your journey getting here? Um, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a self taught developer myself, mm -hmm. JavaScript, and at that point, back in the days, I've been writing code for around eight years, okay. um, and I was looking. Well, it's it's a funny story, right? But uh, it was quite of it was an accident. I if you ask me, uh, back in the days, you know, coaching and mentoring. Yeah. I thought this is something that a, a psychologist does, you know, I never really uh, talked about this and mentoring. Yeah. I, you know, I have mentors, you know, one, one or two, right. Yeah. But what happened is I wanted to, I wanted to uh, get into a leadership position at my job. And I realized I, I didn't have 
enough experience. Mm. So, uh, and, and back at the, in that position, I was stuck as an individual contributor, mm -hmm. which means um, I, I wanted to move more into a leadership position, but I wouldn't get a chance to, um, yeah. to lead people. And I read online that, you know, you can, you can be the leader of the team. You don't have to be the boss. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you do that by, by mentoring, by taking responsibility. And I couldn't do that at my job still. Mm. But I said, I, I went outside and I offered myself uh, voluntarily in different, um, in different communities in Berlin to help junior devs. And they were uh, junior developers that were coming from, let's say, special backgrounds, such as the you know, refugees or people mm. that don't have, didn't, they don't have the same opportunities as many of us did. And that's how I started. And what happened there is those people, uh, those mentees, those first mentees that I've got uh, were starting to get jobs. Um, I was also part-time teaching as a, um, as a teaching assistant in a boot camp. Mm -hmm. And my ex-students asked me, hey, now I did the boot camp now, how do I get a job? Mm -hmm. right, and this is how we started. We were helping out uh, junior devs, actually. We started by helping out the junior devs uh, to kind of get mid-level positions or back in the, back in the days. Um, and at, at one point I was discussing this with one of my mentors mm -hmm. and he told me um, I had to choose between getting a um, architect promotion back in the job. Um, but I remember talking to him and he told me something like that was, yes, I mean, you, you know, if you stay here, you can go, uh, of course, and there is a, a path for you, but you're always talking about your, you know, your side projects and the people you're, you're mentoring. Maybe, you know, you don't live twice. Yeah. Or if you really want to do this, uh, you want to do this now. And that's when I quitted my job. Yeah. And yeah. that's what, um, that's when we, you know, I started getting involved full time. And that's when you actually start growing because there's a, there's a big difference yep. between doing something part time yep. and actually putting all your, yep. all your eggs into your one, yep. one basket. I understand completely. Don't worry. Um, and how long have you been running the senior dev for? now uh three years in july oh, wow okay so three years since our first you know paying customer yeah. which for us means you know doing it professionally yeah yeah so um you mentioned boot camps there what do you think is a difference between what you're doing and a, a boot camp and boot camps have varying reputations there's good ones and there's bad ones what do you do differently i think that the target audience changes everything Mm -hmm. Right, we are dealing with developers that have been writing code for three, five, yeah. seven years. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we don't have to spend a lot of time teaching you the basics. Yeah. We can also be more abstract in our in our teaching. Also, senior developers or mid level devs are a bit more autonomous. Yeah, which means that not everything has to be step by step. Um, I know boot camps have um, you know mixed reputation, yeah. and that's because well, you know, whenever you have someone providing a, many companies providing a service not everybody will you know provide the quality they claim yeah, um, yeah. and they kind of got a bad rep um, but if you talk to a lot of bootcamp graduates even if they didn't got what the bootcamp actually promised which was a, a 100k job for everybody um, for many times um, it, it 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 did got them it did get them most of them where they wanted to. Yeah, right. It yeah. did gave them a structure. It did it did gave them um, um, gave them a path. Right. So I think we are a bit different because this is not a full time uh, training. This is something you do um, besides your job. The the content of getting to senior dev is completely different to hey let's learn some uh, JavaScript and some HTML together and get your first job. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. What we do yeah. have in common with the boot camps is that we do give a structure. We have a structured approach. So, um, you know, there is a tinkle assessment, then there are some certain goals that we have to match. Um, um, and of course, you know, there is a kind of some material that we have to go through, right, for you to become that senior dev. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. So you've mentioned some of the things so far, some of the differences so far. What do you consider the difference between a junior dev and a senior dev? You've mentioned some, but give me some more. <laughs> What's the, what, what separates one from the other? I mean, I think junior to, to senior is quite easy yeah. to, to make the difference between someone because they are quite in the opposite sides of the spectrum, right? What, where it gets tricky is, for example, a mid-level dev mm -hmm. or a, an early senior versus a late senior developer, right? Um, and it, it's, a, it's a really important question because there is no, 
you know, Microsoft has some guidelines. Google has some mm-hmm. guidelines. Those are the fan companies that actually have um, structures in place. Yeah. Maybe there are some European smaller companies. Um, I am, some some names like maybe Peloton, maybe the Guardian in the UK. They have a, a well defined structure, but most companies don't. Most yeah. companies, um, a senior dev was already there, or a senior dev is someone that's really familiar with the code and has been with the company for a long time. Right. Uh, the best definition that we can f- that we that I came up with that I uh, and actually it's not made by me, but I found it in a um, um, in a, in an article was um, a senior developer. It's someone that has a level of skill that's way beyond the average in the team, company, or market that they are in. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's all a respect to the average because only when you have a, a deeper expertise than the people around you, you can actually influence, mentor, and teach, Mm -hmm. which is kind of the the differentiator. Um, A developer that can write great code can collaborate well. A developer that can understand requirements well, that's a good developer, Mm. not a senior developer. A senior developer can provide certain kind of technical leadership in the team. That means you're able to to influence, you're able to uh, make technical decisions and convince convince the team why you made them. Right, And, And that's a skill that without having enough depth, technical depth, you won't get there. Yeah. Um, people talk a lot about the soft skills that go around them. In my understanding, in my in what I've seen from the market right now, because many of us are self-taught, mm-hmm. the biggest gap that we have is the technical gap. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Did I answer your question? Yeah, uh, I'll yeah. Say, <laughs> I, I a junior developer wanted, needs a lot of I guidance. I wanted to dig into a little bit more yeah. because there, there's kind of, yeah. you know, there's different companies that have different perspectives on this. There are some mm-hmm. companies that go for that junior or just no title, senior, staff, sometimes like principal, lead, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And then there's other companies that just have, you know, engineer, member of technical staff, individual <laughs> contributor at varying levels. And the 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 perspective to the outside world is everything's very flat. So do you think do you think the ability for people let's say developers in this, but we know it applies to varying roles in technology companies, the ability to give yourself uh, a title that kind of indicates something of your seniority is important or is it less important than it used to be? Or is it only important to some people? You know, why is there this different companies do different things and something is a bad <laughs> thing. Something is a good thing. You know, why do you think there's these different opinions on these titles? Um, I mean, there, there, there are several sides to this and I, I don't think any of them it's completely wrong. Yeah. But uh, of course we live in the real world, right? And in the real world, people have to organize each other in the real world. You cannot have 20 developers in a meeting. Yeah. So you need to call the seniors, right? Who, who would you get into a meeting where you can have five people and you have 20 developers in a team? Yeah. And this is where titles become important. There's a crowd there saying, Hey, um, you know, titles don't matter. And what matters is what you can get done. And yeah. I think that's, that's a good assessment for yourself as a professional, right? It doesn't matter what the label your company, uh, put on you, you need to be able to get stuff done. Right. That's one thing. Mm. But inside the company, for example, when you're getting introduced to a new team as a new developer, yeah. um, if you're mentioned, if you're introduced as a senior developer, you'll already be seen like one and, and people, we all have our own biases, uh, but that has an effect also yeah. on your confidence, on their ability to listen to you. So I think titles are a reality in the workplace. Um, I think they do give you access to certain information, mm. right? To certain meetings, as I said, um, that only the senior developers can be involved with. They give you a certain perceived authority. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean you will keep that authority unless you deliver, but they do make it easier for you to deliver at that level. Yeah. yeah. Right. So titles... Yeah are important. Now, you know, if you look at a, a different um, a different side of the spectrum, which is the freelance market, where people act more like independent actors, yeah. um, what matters more there rather than the title, it's your rate, right? Uh, but within the employee, the permanent employee market, as a developer, you should care about your title. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, I think, I've seen it does matter because especially there's cultural differences. I think America tends to be a little bit more with titles. And sometimes when there's companies that say, oh, everything's flat, it makes it harder for you to prove when you leave, especially if they're using terminology that other companies don't use. It's like, well, we're looking for a senior dev. It's like, well, I am a senior dev, but your last job wasn't a senior dev. Oh, but it was, it was just called something else. You know, it gets, (laughs) (laughs) it kind of gets complicated. Um, Yeah. Um, 
I didn't actually realize you were based in Berlin as well. I just was just now scroll down. I don't know. Maybe we're just down the road from each other without even realizing. Um, <laughs> Probably. But, <laughs> but um, so do you run these, uh, the program all online or sometimes in person or a bit of a mixture? Because you also have photos of you meeting some people. So, <laughs> so yeah, where does it run? Does it run hybrid, I guess, or...? Um, a program it's uh, the program it's fully online yeah 100 percent online and that's because we have students for example in the US in yeah. both coasts yeah. of the yeah. US yeah. right we have students in France we have students all over Europe um, but we do have um, uh, we do make um, we do host certain in-person events for the community members mm. to get together um, we did this we did it in Berlin twice we did it in London for the first time okay. we are planning um, uh, to visit Amsterdam. Um, so depending on the number of students we have in a certain country, yeah. uh, we will schedule or not a, an in-person event, which is pretty awesome because you get yeah. to know the people yeah. that you've been having calls with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what was your talk about then? Uh, we are developers last week. What did you talk about? Um, <laughs> about how to get to senior, right? So um, the focus of my talk uh, last week yeah. was, um, okay, you know, not, not everyone will join our program how can I uh, at least give a high level overview of what are the, the steps that a developer needs to take mm -hmm. to move towards a senior level? And how can, can I give them some resources, some books, uh, something that they can do right now for them to get to be one step closer to that? Yeah. Here's an interesting one. I've heard, you know, with the, the advent of um, assistance at the moment, for and lots of people are starting to use them for coding problems that mm -hmm. the 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 biggest problem is going to be for junior developers because it's going to be hard to get experience and maybe for senior and and staff and etc it's going to be slightly easier because you still have that level of experience what do you what do you think about that do you feel like there's going to be a problem for people getting on the ladder in the first place in the coming years or is that everyone just worrying unnecessarily, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, even today I was playing with um, GPT yeah. myself. I was writing some code, some Python code. I, I, I'm not a Python dev. Yeah. Um, but again, I was uh, still over lunch talking to, to Bog and my partner. We're like, but uh, Chad GPT won't make you a, a senior developer, yeah. right? Um, I, think, uh, I think it's a pretty useful tool for both senior and junior devs. Mm, some people say, hey, it actually, um, uh, actually right now you have a, a senior dev that will code together with you, right? Yeah. You can, uh, ChatGPT can even explain you certain uh, technical decisions. So you think, right? think ChatGPT is a senior dev? <laughs> oh, <yeah>. um, <laughs> I, I, you know, uh, I, I, I <laughs> it's, 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 um, uh, let's, let's keep it like that. It's a large language model yeah, that has yeah, been yeah, trained yeah. on a lot of code. <laughs> That's it knows a lot. It doesn't necessarily know what to do with it, but it knows a lot. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes you can get pretty pissed at ChatGPT because it, it makes certain mistakes, but I'm sure this will be improved. So we try to understand, Hey, how is the tool changing the landscape? Yeah. And I think it goes both ways. I think uh, junior devs will advance much faster. So, mm. uh, and even like product managers, people that were close to the, to the developer Developers, but didn't have that technical understanding. Uh, with ChatGPT, they can you know spin up a little app by themselves, right? So um, I think it will definitely increase the quantity of software we have, yeah. and also the complexity. Yeah. So some people think no, you know, developers will be replaced, but actually this will just triply multiply the amount of code we have out there, yeah. right? You will have company, even a company like ours, that's a really small company. We are running, you know, together with a CRM and all the software we've got in the backend. And that thing is just in increasing. I, I guess five years ago, we would need a full development team ourselves yeah. to yeah. have this thing running. So the cost of building software decreases and we will just see a lot more software, software being built. That means a lot more complexity. That means we need more developers. Right. We'll see. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just, if you think at the yeah. number of, of microservices that a small company can run just to function, maybe it's like 60, 70. And if I'm thinking like a bigger company and with all the different AIs, yeah. um, it just gets to a point where you need like, you still need someone that full time 
it's whether I, I don't care who's writing the code, but you will need someone to manage that code. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, code manager, not developer. Yeah. Co- exactly. A code manager, code assembler, because <laughs> code they want assembler. <laughs> code assembler or whatever. But, and, and the junior devs, um, what's funny is that, you know, well, first of all, ChatGPT has limited usage. Yeah. So <laughs> when you run out of prompts, <laughs> you have to go back to your Stack Overflow <laughs> or whatever. Well, I mean, as we saw that. at the, the con, they uh, Stack Overflow announced something which I actually really want to dig into. I need to try and get an interview with them because that was quite interesting to see what that's going to be. But anyway, that's that's nothing to do with you. Um, it's more <laughs> of the same, right? Quora has its own chatbot and uh, it's basically ah, okay. applying yeah. applying the same technology to uh, to kind of the knowledge base, uh, yeah, which is awesome. But, but there's, there's things you know? like, um, I just read a, an article from Wikipedia today as well about how, you know, a lot of these models are trained on Wikipedia. So how does Wikipedia remain relevant? They're not ad supported, but they need people to know they exist. They're not just a source of knowledge. Um, and also how do they prevent people from, um, the, the main problem they're thinking of is how they prevent bots writing Wikipedia pages. And then it just becomes this circle of bots <laughs> recursively <feeding> bots. stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's kind of the big issue at the moment, I think. And that was what the stack overflow people were talking about as well. Um, anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> So at the moment, you mostly, well, you just do JavaScript. Are you thinking of branching out into other languages or more general or just sticking with JavaScript? Um, for now, we we will stick to, to this. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason being, I feel like there's a lot still left in this, in this market. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also like, um, you know, some people say, you know, there are some things that are, uh, certain things that a senior developer should know yeah. that are technology and framework agnostic. I can agree to the framework agnostic part. Yeah. Um, technology agnostic, I, I don't. I don't think so. I think a uh, a senior developer is not yet an architect. Mm-hmm. An architect should be someone that sees way beyond platforms and languages. But a senior developer is still someone that's quite biased because of the language. Um, a senior Ruby developer, it's it's someone that yeah, knows yeah. the Ruby ecosystem really well, right? A senior yeah. Java developer, and it's not just the language itself; it's all the ecosystem, yeah, 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 surrounding yeah. it, right? This is something I've been um, noticing so we will, a lot, actually. It's funny because I come I'm a bit older. I come from a background <laughs> where like MVC was always the model, and now with a lot of yeah. JavaScript tools, they're really breaking that. And so you're right. And if you're still using Ruby, you probably still think in that frame set. And I don't say one's good and one's bad, but you're right. There are different paradigms in each of those uh, to- those op- those choices that do the senior level of knowledge is important. So yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah. So we will we will still we will stay with JavaScript um, until we feel that this is really the best you know, training program in the world, yeah. right? So um, we, we're still building that. I calculated around five years. Um, you know, after five years, maybe we think about doing something new, but, uh, you know, th- one of the, and and uh, you probably, I didn't say that part of the story, but when I started out three years ago, mentorship and everything kind of started gaining a lot of popularity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there were many people that started similar um, kind of different programs, different formats. Um, and every year there's, you know, there's less and kind yeah. of w- we stayed relevant because we stayed focused. And yeah, that's something true. that de- developers can also learn from. Um, you know, there was AI, there was blockchain, there was yeah. IoT, there was machine learning came, went out and now again. it came back to <laughs> LLM, back again. And I'm still doing JavaScript. Right? So uh, sometimes yeah. uh, it pays to be the bo- most boring person in the room. I know. That's, that's a lesson. Yeah. That's true. It's true. Yep. Yeah. That's very true. Okay, so give me uh, to wrap up. What's uh, what's your um, sort of top three tips to to becoming a senior developer without giving too much away? What's your top three tips? For sure, I can I can give it all away. Uh, I mean, uh, doesn't mean people will actually implement it. Right? There's a difference true. between uh, information and transformation, <laughs> and the gap is implementation. Yes. yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Um, so. Um, if I were to boil it down into, into three things, right. Um, I would say, well, actually we have four yeah. fundamentals that we call in the, in the senior, senior dev program. And I'll, I'll say the four of them. Um, so number one, it's, it's mindset. It, one, one thing that yeah. we, and you see a lot of books here, but, um, you know, if you're waking up at, uh, at nine and jumping into your daily meeting, uh, highly caffeinated and trying to be relevant in the global workforce, yeah. um, that that's not going to work. So having a, a healthy, um, a healthy routine, healthy habits, and together with that, a clear objective yeah. and 
a clear, um, you know, clear vision and, and goals that are quantifiable mm. and that are backed by habits. Mm. That's kind of the foundation. Mm. Okay. Because that will determine, um, you know, we can have a big dream, all of us doesn't mean everybody can write down on a sheet of paper. Hey, and you know, in the next three years, I want to lead a team. Uh, not everybody can execute on this every month, every day until we get there. Yeah. Right. So, um, we need number one, a vision, uh, a clear vision, and we need a certain, certain goals that I break down into daily habits or weekly habits. Um, that's a, that's the first step. Right. Um, and now we can get into the technicalities, yeah. right? Um, which again, number one, strong, fund strong fundamentals. Okay. Um, strong fundamentals are hard to teach because just trying to learn JavaScript well will change the way you think about computer science as a whole. Because mm. you start getting deeper, deeper into computers, deeper into memory, deeper into performance. Uh, and your whole, and this is funny, the more you focus on something and the deeper you go, the more you learn about the whole thing. Yeah. Right? I think, um, who said this? I, this famous painter that painted the Sixteen Chapel. Oh, um, uh, <laughs> Michael, oh God. Michelangelo, yeah, yeah has a quote about this. <laughs> you embarrass myself uh, the, for saying the wrong one. I've seen it, so yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, so um, mm, uh, senior level mindset, fundamentals, and big picture view, yeah. right? And this is a this is why some people get stuck um, as an individual contributor many times or as a JavaScript developer. A, a, a great JavaScript developer will never be a, a true senior engineer, mm. right? A senior engineer has a more transferable knowledge, yep. has an understanding of the yeah. backend. Yeah. You know, JavaScript is a client side language. Of course, we have Node.js and we yep. have all that stuff, but it's a purely yep. client side yep. language, yep. right? Yep. Um, and of course, the cloud part that comes into into play and a bit of software architecture. Yeah, those are the parts that we do in in the second stage. Yeah. and the fourth part uh, after the big picture, it's selling yourself. Yeah. Because you can be a great developer and you can be a starving artist, and uh, we are professionals. We code for yeah. money, right? Your 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 life will directly be impacted by. Doesn't matter what's your relationship with money, whether you love it or you hate it. I don't really care. You need it. Yeah. <laughs> right? True. So yeah. Um, and you need to be able to get interviews, pass interviews, yeah. pass technical interviews, negotiate an offer, and make sure that you stay relevant. <laughs> I love that most of what you said was not technical stuff. It's very, <laughs> it's very good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so if people want to find out more, they go to The Senior Dev. Senior Dev takes you to a different website. I did. I know. <laughs> the Senior <laughs> Dev. Um, and yeah, so I'm guessing you, you operate programs on a continual basis. It's not like uh, people have to register at a certain time of year. It's just ongoing. And I assume also if people are interested in becoming mentors or something like that, they can find details as well. So, yeah. Um, yes, regarding mentors, we've limited that okay. to the team between Bogdan and I. Um, in order to be a mentor, as of now, at the senior dev, you need to be kind of intimately familiar with JavaScript ecosystem, mm -hmm. the JavaScript ecosystem. So, we, you know, just because you're a, you are a great developer doesn't mean you're good at a great teacher. Yeah. Um, it's, it's two different things, right? Um, what, how people can find out about us is, you know, um, check us out on, on YouTube, follow me on LinkedIn, uh, see the stuff we are putting out there. Yeah. And if you want to be part of the community, if you're interested in, in using our services, then they can uh, book a chat with yeah. me, um, see if there's a fit. Yeah. And depending on the capacity we have every month, we can decide whether, uh, you know, they want to jump on board with yeah. us or not. Amazing. Cool. Thank you very much for your time, Dragos. Thank you, Chris. All right. And that was my interview with Dragos of the Senior Dev. So, yes, I don't have much to catch you up with, really, because I haven't done anything <laughs> apart from sit around and do very little the past week. But uh, now I'm back, uh, back to work. I am currently at IT Arena in Lviv for the fourth time, actually, which is which is quite amazing. Looking forward to that the next couple of days. So there'll be plenty of interviews coming from this too. And uh, I have a few posts and videos I am putting some finishing touches to whilst I'm here to get out to you in the next few days. I think I'm going to stick to the same format as last episode. I'm not going to include any ads, but what I'm going to ask is if you've listened to the show for some time, if you read my newsletter... If you have been on the show at any time, please give me a review. Wherever you listen to the show, give it a review. I have a, a fair few regular listeners, but I've never really pushed for reviews. And a few people have said to me, you need them. <laughs> so please go ahead. Please pop over to wherever it is that you are listening to the show and leave me a review. Much appreciated. And uh, yeah, it <laughs> keeps, keeps things going. 
As always, you can find more about me at chrischinchilla.com. And if you happen to be in Lviv, say hi. I'll be around. And uh, I'll be back to you soon with a proper full episode again. Take care, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show. Find out more about me at chrischinchilla.com, where you can find show notes, sign up for my newsletter, and find all of my writing, games, work, and video links. There's also details on how to get in touch with me. And if you want to get even closer to what I do, join my Discord server for behind-the-scenes discussions and helping me produce my shows and work.